Now that the problem has been stated in entry 009 and the published results of Goerz's review, along with some consequences in entry 009a, we now turn to the beautiful way in which Joy Christian formulated Bell's error. In his disproof of Bell's theorem, Christian indeed derives the correct value of 2 root 2 without quantum mechanics and for classical systems. This is what Bell should have got. Christian and Gerds have found Bell's errors in two independent studies. Bell's error was made in his first equation. Let's have a look. This equation does not adequately account for all possible elements of physical reality of a spin. It simply says a spin can take two values of plus one and minus one, but that ignores the fact that a spin is oriented in some way. Notice here that Bell says that the product of two components should agree with quantum mechanics, but that, he says, is impossible. Well, that statement is wrong. Christian showed this by the use of geometric algebra, also known as Clifford algebra, to categorize the elements of physical reality of a spin. Bell missed a lot, as we will see. In a nutshell, all that Bell's inequalities show is that the correlation between two points on a line is different between the correlation between two points on a sphere. The points on a line could represent the data from hair, eye, or skin color all right, but not if the data comes out in a sphere like spin data does. Nonetheless, classical probabilities work on spheres just as well as on lines, but with a different algebra. Therefore, Bell's first equation misses important elements of physical reality by ignoring the sphere of data in favor of scalar data. Indeed, spin can take two values of plus one and minus one when measured, but these values can point anywhere on the unit sphere, not just along a line. Let us read the main points of the abstract. It is shown that Bell's theorem fails for Clifford algebra. This is made evident by exactly reproducing quantum mechanical expectation values by means of local deterministic variables. Since Clifford product of multivector variables is non-commutative in general, the spin correlations violate the CHSH form of Bell's inequalities just as strongly as their quantum mechanical counterpart. We'll come back to multivectors later. Here is another paper in which he shows that Bell's choice of physical reality is incomplete. The most important point is that there are situations when classical variables do not commute, whereas Bell's always do. Christian finds more elements of physical reality, and these are exactly the ones that Bell missed. And yes, he has had his critics too, but he has replied to them all. Now, Clifford algebra is also called geometric algebra and is concerned with the algebra in different geometric spaces. However, the point I want to make is that Bell's B Ables are geometrically a unit sphere of zero dimension, denoted by S0. That is just two points, plus one and minus one, on a line. That is all Bell uses. In contrast to Bell, Christian realized that spins can point in two directions over the surface of the usual unit sphere in the real world, and this is called a two-sphere, S2. The top line, the zero-sphere, is Bell's, and the two-sphere is Christian's. Bell's choice has no orientation nor left and right-handedness, while the two-sphere of Christian's does. I'll get to that soon. To see this more clearly, if you look at the standard EPR experiments, then each spin has a data set that forms a sphere of S2. At each filter, the spin is pointing in some direction on that unit sphere. EPR experiments seek the correlation between two spins to give a coincidence data set. Now that data, obtained by correlating the spin data from two two spheres, gives the coincident data set that obeys the geometry of a three-sphere, S3. Well, this is quite different from Bell. 
The data set used by Bell in his first equation has too few elements of physical reality, whereas Christians has counted them correctly. Bell misses S2 minus S0 elements of physical reality. What does this lead to? It makes sense that the algebra on different spheres is different. You know that when a plane flies polar routes. An S2 sphere corresponds to Clifford algebra CL30, and this is represented by the Pauli spin matrices. Bell's B Abels are zero spheres or scalars. What are Christians? Christians' B Abels are bivectors and trivectors relevant to the two sphere. These two cases can be compared and contrasted. It is the bivector choice that makes the difference. An example of a bivector is given by the product of two Pauli spin matrices, and a trivector is given by the product of three vectors in terms of a two by two identity matrix. These play important roles in this approach, and the local hidden variable theory I discussed in blogs six and seven. Just a brief primer on algebraic geometry. Let us drop the indices on A and B. They are still by vectors. Take the product of two and get this equation that exploits symmetry between bivectors in terms of the dot and wedge products defined here. The wedge operator is a generalization of the vector cross product. Whereas scalar be -ables of Bell's commute, the bivector be -ables of Christians on a sphere do not commute. This is an important difference. Now, I mentioned that the Pauli spin operators represent the Clifford algebra CL30. This general expression reduces to the well-known relationship between Pauli spin operators in terms of the Kronecker delta function, I must equal J, and the Levi Civita totally anti-symmetric third rank tensor, where if any two components, I, J, K, are equal, then epsilon is zero. I, J, K can take values of X, Y, and Z, an epsilon is equal to plus one for an even permutation of XYZ and minus one for an odd permutation of XYZ. This can be written as a trivector. Let us go through this quickly. Put I equal to Z and J equal to X. Then the first term with the delta function is zero because I is not equal to J. Then because of the levi civita rules, K must equal Y. So now multiply both sides by plus or minus I sigma Y, which gives the identity. But this identity has two directions and two values, plus or minus one. Since it also has orientation, it is a truer representation of spin than two scalar points of plus one and minus one. So let's use this identity relationship. The double valued identity operator points in all directions over the unit two sphere. So it has direction and orientation. Let's remove the sphere to see things a bit more clearly. Equatorial planes are elements of one spheres, S1. It follows easily that the identity has two values of plus or minus one, and these two trivectors lie along the spin direction. Let's look at a different orientation. Once again, we get two values, but for a spin now pointing in different directions. That is, the elements of physical reality chosen correctly by Christian specify the possible values a spin can take in different directions. Well, it makes a lot of sense.